Hey everyone, welcome to the third edition of the mini RPG of the week. The action continues. Will we get another new winner? Last week did see Marius manage to take down Yannix, but Yannix, fresh off the back of a couple of the day win, not minutes ago, will be coming into today hungry to regain another title. He, of course, did manage to win the practice test edition week zero, one week one, and is now coming into week three off the back of, as I say, another couple of the day win. That man is popping off in these competitions at the moment and we'll be looking to regain a title here tonight's map should be a good one hopefully as usual i don't know what it is yet i have a couple of notes from the mapper but they don't mean anything to me because as i say haven't seen the map do not know what's going on i can reveal now that the map is called oreo you guys would have seen that in the pre-screen as well and well the mapper has told us he's pretty happy with how the scenery turned out using entirely vanilla scenery so i'm looking forward to seeing what he's actually managed to do with it the mapper tonight is Mr. Big Lose, uh, I don't know a huge amount about, amount about him. The words are coming hard today. Look, I was in work for a long time. I don't know a huge amount about the mapper. Yeah, that came out right. But I do know that he has been mapping here in Trackmania 2020 for about the last 11 months and spent a lot of time mapping in uh, Counter-Strike in Far Cry before that. And I'll be honest, I didn't know that mapping in Far Cry was a thing you could do. So I, for one, am going to go and figure out a little bit more about what that actually means once we're finished with the stream here. Uh, very much looking forward to getting into the map. If this is your first time joining us, and hey, I hope it is someone's, uh, the format is, as usual, a 15-minute warm warm-up slash discovery period on the map as the players will be coming in blind never having seen the map before and after that 15 minutes we will head straight into a cup of the day style knockout uh, where depending on the amount of players we get it'll go from four players being knocked out down to two when we get down to 16 or 18 and then down to one once we get inside that top 10 until we get to a final two battle it out and I got to tell you we have seen some exciting battles not just inside that top kind of five but all the way through the field throughout the last few weeks but once once we get into that top five, things have real up. We saw the infamous Canadian DNFing uh, on map two on week one. Uh, Canadian DNFing on the platform jumps uh, and ultimately seeing his opponent make a mistake that potentially could have gotten him right back into the battle potentially could have seen him actually do. And I can tell you, there's a few players out there who pretty clearly haven't watched that clip. I was watching a Granada YouTube video there recently. Something very similar happened uh, in the alternate attacks cup that they do every week now as well. I believe they're doing it monthly. I'm not sure what the format is for that, but the point is, you gotta remember, when it comes down to these close situations, if I see a DNF, I'm gonna be very upset. You never know when your opponent is gonna crash out as well, and you have to give your opponent the opportunity to beat themselves sometimes if you can't do it yourself. Hopefully getting into map before too much longer here. The clock has ticked over to the hour, and that means that we should be live into the server in just a few seconds here. Getting to run through discovery on this track with the players. It looks a little bit like my camera's gone to the dogs, and uh, this is an issue I've been having a little bit over the last couple of days. I don't know what's happening, but uh, hopefully, you know, you can still hear my voice fine. And Really, that'd be the main thing. Uh, as long as you can hear me properly, I'm going to be happy. 
deployer showing off with his fancy hello stream buttons and i hope everyone is having a lovely wednesday evening here uh we're gonna do some troubleshooting deployer i can tell you after this stream is done because we need to figure out why my camera keeps doing this it is annoying <laughs> Uh, Deployer, of course, doing a great job behind the camera, though. He's managed to fix all of his problems, and so, in return, I'm hitting him with some of my own. Anything else that we can talk about before we get into the map here? Well, we have some notes, but again, not many of them are going to make a huge amount of sense. I mean, look, the map is a mixture of RPG and an undisclosed other track style. I guess we'll let you know once we actually see what the track is. Uh, I know what it is, but, you know. The difficulty shouldn't be too necessarily high, but the mapper does hope that uh, when we get in there, we will notice that... While the difficulty to finish the map isn't necessarily the highest, it is challenging to get very fast times on it. And I think those are the most fun maps. The best for a style like this, where players are going to get finishes, but the players are not necessarily going... There's going to be separation based on skill. I'm already seeing why the map is called Oreos. And I've got to say, I do agree. I like how this scenery has turned out. The black and white everywhere, the blocks. It's definitely got a sense of style to it. And let's follow through with some of these players as they do manage to get through. BMX22C is back. Of course, had a good placement in one of the previous track uh, in mini RPG of the weeks, I should say. And was in the gym this morning just to prove that he can flex a little bit better than the rest of us as well. Let's follow through with BMX 22C. 33 seconds into a run here and trying to figure it out. Definitely a couple of pathfinding elements it looks like here in this week's mini RPG of the week. Something that I wouldn't say has been missing necessarily from previous weeks, but it's quite hard to do in mini RPG compared to kind of a more traditional longer RPG form. Some nice jumps through holes, well-placed holes on the map here as BMX will go for a dive off the wall. Just checking to see if that was the way. Other cars are, you can see them disappearing off into the distance there. A nice little precision section to get you through. Then a big jump, gonna have to carry some speed through on that section. We'll figure out how much speed they need to carry as they go. And that's another jump, looks like a very awkward one to land. Oh, it's go flat and then rotate the car through. That's gonna be interesting seeing rounds. I can see some misjudgments on that. Again, a little bit of precision into the finish. And this finish is another one that the mapper said he was very happy with how that finish turned out. He said it just feels good to drive. And I gotta say, it looks good to drive as well. And I could definitely see it turning into some tight finishes as players clip, bounce off that last block as well. So let's go through on a clean run with BMX. Into this start bit, into this quarter pipe. And if you carry a little bit too much speed there, you're likely to be sent for a ride into the distance. Map not looking too long just yet. Ooh, a touch off the wall. Need to be careful there, potentially, unless that is intentional. We'll see how the drivers choose to take that half-pipe jump turnaround as we get further into it. Through this one, you're going to want to be careful not to get air time through the bumpy road sections. And then it's this turn, and after the turn, it's drop down a little bit, precision onto this section, being careful to get as little air time as possible, while also trying to make sure you get it. Try to bounce there, and if you do the full respawn, well, we'll not get to see where it goes there as BMX will reset all the way back to the start. The 15 minutes, these players will, of course, be trying to get things as consistent as possible in that time. But also, now is the time, if you have to, to try and work on your recovery strats. Try and figure out exactly what they are, because, I mean, there's definitely a chance that you're not going to make it through every single round without a little bit of a crash, without a little bounce off a wall here and there. Another look at this. Well, Frank choosing not to even go there. I'm not sure. <laughs> I already cannot remember if there was a checkpoint at the top of the half pipe. And I cannot remember if you needed to go up there. But Frank just taking the right turn after that checkpoint. And that may just be the intended route on the drop down here again. I think we're going to be seeing players really optimize that drop down. Seeing them get as little air time as possible. The back wheels nearly clipping off the edge there. But don't quite as Frank now is across onto this platform. Where you want to go low, high, low. Stay low onto that jump and then into the finish. A little bit precise. You need to keep your height. You need to make sure you're getting into that finish and not just into the platform below it. Deployer doing a great job of guiding us here as we follow on board with a few of the other players as we see. See how many players were getting into the lobby at the time being. And let's take a look at the times that they are getting. I have no idea how many players we have in the lobby at the moment. But Tarpor there setting the number two local record. Hazard do having the first local record moment of 44.7. The mapper, Mr. Big Lose, believes that a 44.2 likely to be a very good time for rounds in this, but also he does believe that the world record could hit easily below a sub-42. And in my experience, that probably means that during this warm-up period, we're probably going to see some players set some very good times. I'm expecting a 43 sooner rather than later. You can see how close MTAD has gotten there, a 44.09. 
I think it's probably within the next couple of minutes we're going to see that 43 barrier broken. Let's put it. I do channel points predictions, but that'd be a lot of work to try and get that done quickly enough. I will put my money on it being below. Probably before the eight minute mark, we're going to see a below 43 or a 43 below 44. You know what I meant. Hopefully, anyway, it could be fun. I'm looking forward to seeing that precision catch people out a little bit. Here's Uso on a very good run, beating the PB by 0.5 at the moment. Looking to do well in this one. Currently has the 7th place on the leaderboard into the finish now. Will shoot up the rankings and get 2nd place. That's a nice run from Uso. Down into the 44.3. Still not managed to snipe out the 43 though. Not seeing Yannix on that leaderboard yet. And potentially that's a sign that he's yet to actually join the server. He's yet to actually jump on and start setting times. But I think we probably trust him to do well. Yeah, there is definitely no checkpoint up at the top of that half pipe. So players just swinging right and carrying speed into that jump. Over this bump, as we said, again, making sure not to try and get the wheels off the ground, spin out off the track. Maintaining speed in this turnaround, but not going too wide and falling off the edge is going to be important. And then landing here, straight into the drift, keeping speed and straightening out of the drift as quickly as possible without losing your wheels. MTAD on an excellent run here. I think this is it. This is looking like it will finally be the 43. 43.4 as Liker sets one as well. And yeah, we were well clear of that 8-minute mark. Well clear of the 9-minute mark by the time those players managed to get the 43. Definitely looking possible that we will get into those sub-42s here. Or not sub-42. Very hard to speak this evening. Very likely that we will get into those 42s here in this warm-up section, I would say, then. As the mapper said, a sub-42 possible. I don't know. That might be pushing it for these players here in rounds. But I have misjudged them before. Believed less of them than they were capable of. And I guess we'll see. I do note Yannix has appeared on the leaderboard. Well, that's got to be a little bit scary for that world record. It knows it's being hunted down right now. 44.413 for the time being for him. Lots of jumps, lots of transition. Not, not necessarily transitions, excuse me. That's the wrong word. Lots of jumps and lots of transitions to other blocks in the distance, which could also be called jumps, I suppose, if you wanted to call them that. Uh, <laughs> lots of jumps in general on this map. Uh, I'm just going to very quickly... Uh, check something else as I uh, send an invite to someone there. Uh, Babs, if you're watching, there you go. <laughs> Have an invite to the mini RPG of the week Discord. And anyone in chat who wants it as well, you can type exclamation mark Discord in chat right now and get a link to the Discord server where, of course, mini RPG of the week is organized by the wonderful Zetterate, who does a huge amount of work behind the scenes to make this happen. Black Pulse of Well, of course, who's hopefully hanging around in chat, does an excellent job of just moderating the server in general. A classic turnaround. Half-pipe jump there on this one. And you know what that means? That means players trying to get as close as possible at the start without actually losing any time. You don't want to go too high. You don't want to go so low as to miss it. And it definitely is one that the mapper is aware of. Could be a little bit tough. Trying to take the first checkpoint as low as possible, he says, can be fatal. And that sounds like a man who has experienced that maybe a couple of times himself in testing. I guess we'll see. Does it catch players out? Uncharacteristically, we did kind of see Yannick's getting caught out a couple of times at the start of last week's map in later rounds, but last week's map had that classic ice wheels into dirt bug slide. Uh, and you definitely can't just lose the gear, slide out of that very, very easily. Nothing like that here. This is a kind of mini RPG slash tech map where it will just come down to who has the lines, who has the precision, and who can get their car into the slides when they need it and get it back out in time for the next turn. Going to be a little bit tough, a little bit interesting, a little bit fun all around for that one. Following on board with Mikmo now, another name that we're very familiar with here by Edition 3. Looking for another good finish tonight, surely. We do have Liquipedia pages up now for every edition of Mini RPG of the Week, and the top 10 players will get their names immortalized on that one, as we decided that, uh, yeah, putting more than 10 players was going to start turning into a bit of an undertaking very, very quickly. Mikmo trying to figure out the line for this one here, and I quite like that. I don't know if landing on the road border was intentional, but it looks like it's getting the wheels down nice and quickly, and it seems like the risky strat there will be to not get all four wheels onto the middle platform. Maybe just one, two, get the car turning a little bit, but landing quickly onto the road on the other side as fast as possible. Like I say, that sounds to me like a very risky strat, as Big Man Taxon shows us exactly what fatal first checkpoints can look like if you try to take it a little bit too low. Consistency key on these ones, and especially in early rounds, I think you'll see a lot of players safing on that first checkpoint. The early rounds of this Cup of the Day style format, of course, always a bloodbath. 
as uh, some players crash out, unable to finish within the timeout. And we will see what the timeout is. This map a little bit shorter than previous weeks. In previous weeks, that timeout has been 30 seconds after the first car crosses the line. Could well be 30 seconds again, but might be a little bit shorter. We'll see. I have yet to figure that out, and we won't figure it out necessarily until the first round of the format. Five minutes, all that remains here in the war map, and you can see even Big Man Tax on there, not necessarily looking to get all four wheels onto the platform, but you will want all four wheels onto that middle platform for sure, or onto that final platform for sure. If you don't get all four wheels onto that final platform, you're just going to go spiraling into the platform before low that finish. Let's follow on board with Hazardu for a little bit, see how he does in this next run. Going for a relatively low jump, and of course, it really comes down to personal preference there. Are you going for a right jump or a left jump? Are you a righty or a lefty when it comes to those turnarounds? Because, I mean, it feels like you just pick one style and you stick with it. Hazard do on that quarter pipe jump finds himself crashing on out. That is, and I have to say it again, the mapper has done a very good job of highlighting the problem, the pain points for us, for these players. Mr. Big Lou's highlighting that first checkpoint, how dangerous it is when it is low. Highlighting that double mini quarter jump can be dangerous when you come into it just a little bit too much speed because all of a sudden the temptation is to try and stay a little bit low maybe or go a little bit high because you don't want to over jump it. And when you're coming in with that much speed, well, if you go low, you're likely to just clip it. If you try to take the wide line there because you're trying to maybe shed a little bit of speed, well, you're going to end up clipping that inside wall. Definitely going to be a little bit tough for these players. I have missed out on it, but we are well within the 43 second mark now. Liker and Hazardu have both the times I say well within it, less than a tenth underneath it. Lots of time yet to be saved on this map. We have seen Yannick back, drop back out of that top eight is duoing with Korch over on his stream at the moment, and I've been trained on how to say Korch's name a little bit, uh, and by that I mean I've just said it two different ways, and I hope it was one of them. <laughs> but it is definitely not Korchy, and that is, uh, I think, the main thing that I learned last week. Following on board with Mikmo for a brief moment now, as he will attempt to go through, and uh, has already three tenths down, a very good first jump, but there's the speed that's maybe a little risky. Oh, recovers very well, but has now shed a lot of the speed that he had gained in the start, but regains it back, was obviously slow out of that quarter pipe jump on his PB, and is now two tenths ahead, looking for a PB here as we head rapidly towards the end of training. Just two tenths ahead still as he goes into the drop down. Quite a bit of air time on that one, and you can see that has cost him the two tenths already. A much, much faster on the back half of the map on his thing. And it does look like the strategy is going to be try and catch two wheels on that platform and just bounce yourself back onto the road. Flatten yourself out as quickly as you possibly can. Here's Comey. Nice to see another Canadian. And after Canadian's ignominious exit from the competition a couple of weeks ago. Very disappointing. And it'll haunt me forever, that memory. And that's why I unbind my DNF key. Komi doing quite well, currently has the 5th place local record of 43.2, so looking to be about 2 tenths ahead of his PB if they do want to do it, and 2 tenths ahead of the PB is where we are, and to do it, I mean of course to break that 43 second mark, down to 17 tenths, and there you go, that'll be the reset, it's just a little bit too short on the jump. Quite enjoying this map so far. It looks like, you know, it's giving players decision points. And I think that's the exciting thing about Mini RPG in Cup of the Day. It obviously comes down to how well you can drive, how fast you can drive. But it really provides a lot of opportunities to just decide. Am I risking? Am I releasing this jump? Am I trying to go as low as possible? Am I trying to shortcut this corner as much as possible and take an inside line? Because those are the decisions that a player under pressure will get right or get wrong. Those are the decisions that lead to exciting rounds. And I, for one, am very excited about that indeed. For example, the decision here. Do you try and risk it with wheels? Are you safe enough ahead that you don't have to try for just the two-wheel bounce? Because you can safe that. You can do kind of what Comey has done there. And get a couple more wheels. Spend a little bit more time on the middle platform. And definitely make it over. Or you can full risk it and get the two wheels on it. And try and land as quickly on the road as the other side. It's not too hard to lead up into that section. It gives you time to think about the decision. And sometimes having an extra second to think about that decision. That's what leads to the decision paralysis. That's what throws a player off. That's what can separate our best players from our merely good players. And of course that bump will separate the, the good players from the road no matter what happens if they take it wrong. You don't want to be separated from the road. That'll send you flying over a road border. 
Here we go with Yannick's. Looking to set a PB at the moment as well. He's currently slightly down as we go through the next checkpoint. It's still only six hundredths of a second. But there you go. That's a lot more speed he was carrying. Does he maintain it? Down flat quickly onto the road. That's what we said we'd like to see. And it has gained him. He's up two tenths of the moment. And now, do we see him manage to get the two wheels? Nice low approach into it. And he's flat down quickly. That looked good. It is good. 242. And oh no slow on the final platform had to release as he overshot high a little bit and that's how quickly you're going to be able to lose and gain two tenths at the very death on this track and that's going to be very dangerous yannick's not going to manage to set another time here it looks like as he is running out of time we are down to the last 20 seconds here let's see how close he gets to the finish line though he's up five tenths five hundred five tenths on his PB, and so that won't matter. He just goes for a bit of an explore, and really, I'd imagine, just wants to practice this section one more time. You can see it's even going to catch out some of our more experienced players here. As that's a couple of little bounces there. That'll be the end of it for our discovery warm-up phase. And we are going to get ready to get into rounds. Hazardu sets the best time of the warm-up. Clear six-tenths of Yannick's, who did manage to get that second place in the end. And a low 42, the time to beat as we head into rounds. A time that seems a little bit unlikely to beat, but I would imagine the high 43s to mid 43s are what we're going to look at as good times in rounds. And anything below that, well, you are popping off. You are having the round of your life. I'll tell you, I'm excited now for this one. As I said, it looks like there are decision points on the map, and that's what leads to exciting rounds in Mini RPG of the Week. That's what causes players to second-guess themselves. That's what causes spectacular crashes and even more exciting finishes. Looks like we have over 50 players heading into this one. That means, hey, it's going to be a tough battle heading into the top 10, trying to be one of those players that gets your name immortalized on the Liquipedia board. And hey, if you get into the top three, you even get called out in the Discord. So that'd be pretty nice as well. You want to get on that graphic, but you're going to face tough competition to get there. We're not quite over 50 players. Looks like with Deployer there, we're at about 46. Scroll to the bottom before the red starts. Are we going to get there? Oh, it's tense. It's tense. He's scrolling as fast as he can. Look at him go. 49 players is the answer as deployer is number 50 but he's of course just going to be spectating because he's our eyes we rely on deployer to do that into this first round and let's stay on board with the annex for just a little while as we go through this one let's see how he's doing no eliminations this round so it doesn't really matter if anyone is crashing on out 46 players and one DNF already. Yannick's nice and low, and you can see if you are low on that one, well, it gets you out the other side a little bit quicker, but maybe not carrying quite as much speed as, say, Big Man Taxon, or whoopsie was, but there's a crash from Big Man Taxon, and now we'll see other players take the lead. Tarpor, very fast. Had a little bit of an early exit last week, as far as I remember. I'd have to double-check the results, but was a little bit earlier than maybe you'd expect. Yannick's very quick, and now here we go. As we go into this section, does he try to save it a little bit, but not really, as that was very clean, but not clean in the corner afterwards and it'll be a 44 flat almost for Yannix as the time that wins here in warm-up is 43.2 don't necessarily expect to be seeing that in the middle rounds, but especially in early rounds, you know, the top players, they can kind of afford to full risk. There are enough crashes on early in this that you're going to, you know, feel pretty safe about even bonking once, twice, maybe three times and still not being in that bottom four for elimination. Looks like, as we said, it is going to be 30 seconds for the DNF timer. Uh, here on Oreo by Mr. Big Loose. Make your way through the ruined cloud of a pile of Oreos. That's exactly what these players will be looking to do. We are into our first elimination round. Four players will be said goodbye to. We'll be down to just 43 after this one. Let's figure out who they are. Sometimes more than 43, as we do see one player already driving off the edge. Not an auspicious start for them. We're on board with ICTM. You can see a lot of players making it through that section. Already, though, there are more than a few players who've made a big mistake, who are more than three seconds behind the leaders going through the first checkpoint. Looks like there's about five of them to do it at the moment. And right now, it's Oran who is chasing down MTAT. MTAT not too far ahead. In fact, is a long way behind as Oran has already overtaken a few players. These are the early rounds. This is where the chaos lies. As players are making mistakes. They still don't really know the track. They have very little time. It's rough. It, it's very unfair sometimes, I feel on, you know, the players who are maybe a, a, a less practiced in the game. By the time we get to the later rounds, we're seeing players, the top players, who have not only had the 15 minutes warm-up, have had, you know, multiple rounds, another 15, 20 minutes on the track as well. And they look incredible by the time we get there. The early players, we only get to see them on their first round, or their second round, their third round, and then we have to say goodbye to them, as we will say goodbye to a Shield 31. 
is dropping out of the competition in 48th place. Very sad to see. There goes Thib. There goes Herbert Schaff. And there goes, I would imagine, Van Hero. Her Hib all the way back at the start. Thib, I should say, all the way back at the start. Make it through this quarter pipe. We believe in you, Hib. Not quite. No time to do it. And we will only say goodbye to four players as we do end up with 44 finishes in round one. Things you love to see. Players not DNFing out of the first round. We'll head into round two. Nice times being set still at the top of the leaderboard, but nobody really in danger of breaking Hazard U's local record at the moment. And I will be genuinely shocked if anyone manages to break that during these rounds. That looks like a very, very solid time. Tarpor, did you see there? The wheel's catching a little bit, and I'd be a little bit worried for Tarpor. I'm not sure he's made it through this jump. I definitely don't see him right now. He's not in the danger zone for the time being at the moment. You know who is? Yogg is. There's Tarpor, did you see? Didn't I tell you? He's a long way back at the moment. Drops all the way down, but is still in front of the real danger as there are still some players i imagine stuck a little bit on that previous jump on that first quarter pipe it seems to be testing players very hard near the start of the map yog well clear in 38th at the moment as the players behind well they're full five six seconds adrift of yog right now a little bit high off that jump but hey high is safe and safe means a finish and a finish means yog will survive to see another day down at the bottom looks like oron will be the player in 41st and the players behind him liker near whammy and the lips liker that's a surprise liker currently holding the third best time on the server will drop out in round two things you don't necessarily expect to see <laughs> Things you definitely don't expect to see at all. And we'll say goodbye to Liker. A few players in chat surprised by that one as well. Just goes to show nobody's safe in mini RPG of the week. <laughs> Sometimes one round is all it takes. You get caught out a little bit by one jump and then, well, the tilt sets in a little bit. All of a sudden, that jump that you were getting consistently in practice, it no longer works for you. And when the jump doesn't work, well, the round doesn't work. Here's Dive, I'm going to call him, all the way in the back. And I will apologize, as usual, for uh, mispronouncing some people's names. But I'm seeing some of them for the first time. And I've never heard these these names pronounced. And there's a number in the middle of that one. You, you can't blame me for that. I can't be blamed. And the trick is, we're going to be seeing them later on anyway. So there'll be plenty of time to get mad at me for not being able to pronounce it correctly. Because here is Mikmo in the danger zone. And once again, that's a player you don't necessarily expect to see all the way back here. Nick Sobi is the placer, player chasing behind. Bjarkan, El Fafos, and Antoine are behind as well. Mikmo, though, is extending the gap to them a little bit. Half a second up to a second, up to almost four or five seconds now at this point. As that is crashes from everyone behind. And it will be Mikmo scraping through by a full five seconds. So how much of a scrape you want to call it, I don't know. Antoine will finish. Will be overtaken by Bjarkan at the finish line. But will make it through nonetheless. I don't know if Mikmo will want to be getting that close to the danger zone any more often. Mikmo definitely will be expecting to make a much deeper run tonight, just like Liker would have done. Well, we've said goodbye to Liker in the last round, and Mikmo, his, his, his practice time wasn't even as good as Liker's, so I don't know. Mikmo suggests that maybe not risking the rings checkpoints is a good idea. And Hey, uh, I, I think if you've learned anything from Mini RPG of the week... Yeah, that is probably a good idea. Back on Hellish Stream in edition number one, there was a ring checkpoint that was particularly brutal to a few of the players. A full respawn on the previous checkpoint cost you an awful lot of time. And a similar thing going to happen with the ring checkpoint here. If you do risk a little bit too much on it, you're going a long way back, buddy. Here's Branko, a familiar name from our race back on edition one, back on Hellish Stream. And currently, he's sitting pretty much in the safe zone, but not too comfortably in the safe zone. That's going to be a bit of a hot seat right now. Although, he's managed to overtake a few players. Here's someone you don't expect to see at the back. Yannix with the flashing red screen down in 33rd. And we're going to 32 after this race. So, he'll be hoping for a mistake in front. Plenty of time still left in this one. As we do cross the time that you'd be expecting maybe to see Yannix have already finished. He is 10 seconds off the pace right now, but has nonetheless managed to climb up. And Zemius, well, when the car in front of you that you're trying to chase to avoid disqualification is Yannix. You're usually not going to have a very good time of it. Say goodbye to Xemius, say goodbye to Lucario, Psycho Lutra, and Whoopsie. They'll bring us down to 32. Comey with an excellent time in that last round. Manages to get well into the 42s as well. Splits Hazardu and Yannix in the top three of local times. That's a bit of a pop-off, if we do say so. We weren't sure if we'd be seeing the low 42s. Uh, but, you know, uh, there one is. Uh... <laughs> I've just been asked when Mini RPG of the Week starts in Babs. Well, if you get here, 
I'm sorry to tell you, it is uh, live for the last 30 minutes or so. <laughs> Uh, we will be on board with Black Pulse, one of the admins of the mini RPG, or, well, not the mini RPG, the RPG server, and right now he's well safe in 10th place, down in the bottom, MTATTM. We're getting a lot of exciting names down in these disqualification zones at the moment. MTAT, though, Lee's coming back with a vengeance, overtaking players in front, and he has good speed, but not anymore! That's a mistake, because the back wheel clips. And now MTAT is right back into the danger zone and running out of track to catch up on. Currently, sitting in 28th, he's managed to overtake Yogg, but Yogg is a player who's been chasing and a big mistake from Mask means that now Mask is just in front will be overtaken by Yogg and that will be it Mask it was too late in the track to regain from that last platform is just proving to be a challenge for some of these players Zyriel Mask Modio and Olo Yellow We'll say goodbye to them here in the rounds that brings us below 30 players. Down to about three-fifths of what we started with. Not some quick mats for you. I've knocked a zero off 30 and 50. Call me a mathematician. Don't call me a physician, though. Or a physicist. You know what? English is hard and you can't call me an English in for uh, anything either. We'll head inside the top 30. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Some people in chat... Uh, questioning a little bit as the server does uh, try to die on us but we won't let it die there's work yet to be done down to 28 players here and we're on board with branco as we head into this first checkpoint a little bit of risk i'm not sure if anyone did have to respawn on that one it's hard to tell in later rounds i definitely think we're going to be getting more of an idea of if anyone did and look you can see there two players down six seconds it's going to cost you five to six seconds if you do have to respawn after that first checkpoint if you do try and jump a little bit low there goes comey falling off the edge comey currently has the second best time on the round one one of the previous rounds to set that time and right now is sitting very, very dangerously far back. He is still, though, in 24th place. And Uso is hunting. Uso is hunting hard. Is over going to potentially overtake on this one? No, Komi with a slightly better line. And Komi lands quicker as well. And you'll see him accelerate away a little bit. Has managed to extend the gap just slightly. But that's a better line for Uso. And heading into the last couple of turns, it is tight. It is incredibly tight. Komi lands sooner and doesn't clip on the inside wall. And that's the power of just landing quickly off that platform. Of managing to just get the two wheels down, flopping onto the road afterwards and getting tight into that next turn incredibly fast and well played under pressure and to be honest i've only just noticed we have to say goodbye to yog as well as a mistake was made by someone in front and komi and Uso were both safe so hey that's the joy of a couple of the days sometimes those fights don't even matter we'll say goodbye to black pulse as well good night good night sweet uh, admin as the first ring checkpoint has, has gone poorly for him That'll happen, and that'll cost you a lot of time. That'll make it very hard to get back into the race. It'll be a full risk from there. Let's see, anyone messing up on that first checkpoint this time around? Potentially, potentially. In fact, two players did, and Big Man tax on his little ways back as well. BMX, oh, wide. The wheels so nearly fall off the road, but the wheels stay on the bus for the time being. As Big Taxon races off into the distance. I say that, he's straight back down here into the bottom. It was Franco, someone we were staying on board with. Don't question me, I don't know what I'm talking about either. Branco has been forced to respawn just here and now is all the way down into the bottom 24 is down in 22nd at the moment and will be overtaken he's now just that little bit further away from staying in qualification and Zuso who's back fighting for it both of them now will be hoping for a mistake on the platform in front from the cars in front but it doesn't look like we see one it looks like we will maybe see one. It looked like it was Edis, but one player dropping back isn't going to be enough for two players to get back in, especially when there was someone in front of them. Branko, big man, Taxon, Edis, and Uso. Three, four players that we have seen a lot of riding this danger line for a little while so far tonight, and we will say goodbye to them here in the 24. We're into our top 20 in Mini RPG the Week edition number three. Potentially, he'll come under pressure. Saw Edis crash in front of him on that last turn, and you have to feel for it. It's a difficult last couple of turns when you're on that platform, trying to get the angle to actually land without crashing. And hey, if you don't pull it off, that is almost definitely going to mean getting overtaken by the cars behind. Here we go, into the top 20 as the server once again struggles a little bit to catch up with us. We'll get there eventually, though. Come on, server. I believe in you. We have faith. Here we go. Next round in one second. Next round. Go. And we'll see. Corzo, don't low jump into it. The eyes are on you, buddy. You got this. 
nice and high nice and safe but not too safe keeps the speed through and you could see a couple of players already respawn there in the background that's a little bit tough here goes mooks he's the player in the hot seat trying to regain right now and that's a good jump that's nice and low as well we'll get better speed than the player who was forced to try and climb up that hill but right now it hasn't quite mattered yet does it matter now? No, Mooks is still in 17th. There he goes, overtaking Oxense, who is now the player who is in the hot seat. But there's a better inside line there. Incredible speed on a couple of players and a couple of respawns coming through as well. It means that this bottom four, they're getting a little bit separated from the pack. And one of them is Tarpor. And Tarpor is trying to chase, has caught up quite well to the players in front, but needs a very good last turn. You can see Mooks slow moving. And Mooks slow moving means that there's a chance here to try and get past. No, it was just the server lying to us. Mooks was clear, but not clear enough. Tarpor and Mooks 17th 18th they will drop out meanwhile Yannix improves a local record to 42 715 very impressive there nice times across the board we have almost all of our top eight inside the 43 second mark at this point but i can tell you big man taxon won't be improving that eighth position anymore if anyone does it they'll be overtaking him and it'll be insult to injuries big man taxon went out already and they're now trying to keep going the server continues to try and get rid of us we're sticking around and we're down to just two eliminations now as I said before, and I'll say it again, you can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief, a bit of a checkpoint here. As it does go down from being a fifth of the field, being eliminated to an eighth of the field. This is uh, time to wipe those sweaty hands if you are one of the players who's not very close to elimination. And I got to tell you, well, Tenchi Leal, unfortunately, is very close to elimination, has been the player this week who has been in that hot seat an awful lot of the time, but has been surviving so far. Is it luck? Is it skill? And if it is luck, how long can it last? I gotta tell you, it's not looking like luck right now. It's looking like Tenji Leal is just keeping things clean. And keeping it clean, that's what matters to get decent placings in a couple of the day style track. Valor de Pork is not going to manage to catch up. Pigs won't fly today. As Tenji Leal keeps it safe, keeps it on track and keeps it in 14th into the top 14 it's nice says so mtat well he doesn't get the end and when you have a player that's in fourth place saying that it means there is still plenty to discover left on the track you'd imagine it means we could still potentially see fireworks in the last few rounds and i'm getting excited for them i'm still seeing some big names in this competition i'm still seeing some very good players and we're going to see fierce battles yet between them into the top 14. BMX still hanging on. Yan Yannix, Tenchilil, Tada, Ice, Hazardu. Good players all the way down the board. And Rex looks a player whose name I really need to ask how to pronounce eventually because, well, he keeps doing well and I keep butchering the name. So uh, someone remind me about that. I'm going to need to check at some point after this cast. On board with Dive, and that's another player's name. I'm going to have to check Tenchilil. It looks like, well, the fairy tale finally coming to an end. Well, okay, okay, never mind. Somehow still in 12th, and that means we're going to have a battle to the finish line. Rex looks is the player overtaking from behind with more speed. Potentially, there's a few opportunities to overtake yet here. It's going to be a better first turn into the drop down, and Tenchi Leal has got the speed. And that's a clip by Rex looks Doesn't even have enough speed to get clear here. We'll have to take it nice and wide, and it is looking slow. You're hoping for a crash, and it doesn't look like Tenchi Leal is going to provide one. Rex looks will drop into 13th place, and the fairy tale will not end yet. How many times can you be the player sitting right on that elimination line? The answer is a lot more. Brazil stays alive, says M. Tat and Chat, and you have to agree. It is still alive. They'll continue on for the time being. Tenchi Leal, I want to see it one more time. This time you'll be in 10th position if you want to stay in. It'll be the top 10 after this round. This is the point where we decide who goes on the Liquipedia page. Don't drop out now. This is the one you want. Corzo currently leading well clear in front of everyone and it's Mikmo who's down but really it's the jump after this where you have to decide who's going Mikmo will go forward now is continuing nice speed Tenchilil well it wouldn't be around it wouldn't be an exciting round if we didn't see Tenchilil flirting with a little bit of elimination but there you go is overtaking Mikmo and you'd have to imagine that's a mistake and that means Mikmo is in the hot seat and is hoping at this point for a mistake as well. We're rapidly running out of track for an overtake to occur on. There is a mistake. And Belly has managed to crash a little a bit. And Belly, I should say, Mikmo trying to overtake intentionally. Has he touched the outside wall? It's going to come down to the finish line. And with less than a tenth between them, Tenchilil will manage to ride the elimination line one more time. And it's Mikmo and Emtad who drop on out. 
They won't make the top 10, and that's a little bit of a surprise, but who better to do it to them than Tenchilil, the Brazilian god? Just keeping right in front of the 10 people. Unfortunate for Mikmo, who got a little bit of a landing bug in the middle of the track there, but we are into our top 10. We have locked in our Liquipedia entries for the night. <laughs> I keep mentioning it, I've been doing a lot of editing this week, I've done a lot of learning, and so, you know, it's on the brain. But it won't matter. Let's see. Anyone failing here on the first jump? It looks like anybody may be a little bit safe. And at some point now in the near future, we're going to turn from saying failing the first jump to saying risking is a little bit too much of a fail. But I have to, of course, talk about the player who has now crashed all the way out. It looked like Novu with a big one there. And so this is feeling relatively safe for our previous positions. I say safe, but Novu still only just a second behind Ed, who is only about a two, three tenths behind Dybe. And Dive now has been overtaken. Novu is well back into it. Dive into that. They had a fail of their own and now will be chasing a second adrift, though almost two seconds drift. And you have to feel like that's just a little bit too much. The players, when they're paying attention, if they have eyes on those timing splits, should be aware that they can play it safe to the finish line. And that looks like exactly what has happened as Dive and Tada will drop out in ninth and 10th. Good time still being set at the top of the board. We're seeing low 43s most of the time. And the low 43s, well, that's a fast time. That's a hard time to beat. And it's going to mean exciting finishes if that's what we're seeing consistently. And it has been what we're seeing consistently from the best drivers remaining in this lobby. Into our top eight. Tenchilil, we barely even saw him this round. Gaining power as the rounds continue. And has his fellow club member Kyle on board as well for the ride. Impressive from the squad on this one. We'll be down to a top six after this. We'll be down to just one elimination per round after that. And right now, the players in the hot seat are BMX22C and anybody. BMX22C, I mean, maybe the arms are getting heavy after the gym this morning. Can he continue to hold the controller or keyboard for all that much longer? The answer right now, it looks like yes, as he has managed to find some time. And without mistakes, it's Kyle and anybody who are dropping all the way back. It's Kyle and anybody who will be heading to this finish line in 7th place, in 8th place. Tenchilil, why not just stay ahead of your countrymen one more time? Why not cross the line just above the elimination zones? You gotta stay all in on Tenchilil. It's just a good time. We believe he's gonna be just one position ahead of, ahead of elimination all the way to the finish at this point. Full faith. Full send. One player to be eliminated this round. We've gone from a quarter to a sixth of the field. Is it time to breathe a sigh of a relief? No! We're into the top six. There's no time to take your foot off the gas. There's no time to do anything but risk a little bit until the player behind you crashes. But right now, we're getting to the point where we do not expect to see many crashes. There was a little bit of a wobble there. And it's this first ring checkpoint where the crash will happen. It's one crash out there. I'm not sure. It looked like a car maybe crashing out a little bit. Was it Tenchilil? He is a long way back. No, it's BMX22C and it is Hazardu. They're all the way back in BMX22C. He has had to respawn on the ring checkpoint. It's a slow lap. It's a sigh of relief for the other competitors. As they're well adrift now. Just don't crash. You just play it safe. Just breathe. Everyone take deep breaths. We can... We can do well. I hope everyone, uh, I hope everyone in chat feeling pretty good. Hazardu will survive his BMX. Well, he's just pulling off the BMX stunts right now. Looking good. Look at the drift. Look at the moves. Faker. Well, I won't ask what was that because that'd just be rude. We don't need to overly highlight it. 20 seconds left to finish. We'll see one more finish. At this point, everyone in the server is watching you. The eyes are on you. Give him one last show. Do something wicked into the finish. Yeah, kind of. I mean, he nearly went for the bug slide, but you can't bug slide on concrete, so... It was just style points. Finish sideways. Why the hell not? In to our top five. Saying goodbye to BMX. No more biker in this one. And we'll head on through. It's a strong top five. And it's a top five that features Tenchilil, who's made himself the star of tonight's show by just keeping as close as possible to the elimination zone as often as possible. It's the way to go. Get as much screen time as possible. Become the main character. But unfortunately, you're up against a couple of other main characters of mini RPG of the week. And when you fail the first checkpoint, well, things have gone poorly. Tenchilil, it looks like this is finally going to be the end of what was an incredible run today. Trying to, oh, I, I think that was Landon, man. I think you just went for the full wicket on that. I think you went for the front flip and see where you ended up. But it is not to be. Tenchilio will be in the position the BMX found himself in in the last round. Just trying to ride to the finish. 
The players remaining in after this round will be Yannix, will be Hazard, Novu, and Corzo. A few of those players going for another top three finish here. Yannix potentially going for a third win, a second win in official mini RPG of the weeks. Would be an impressive one. And the only other player to get a top one finish, a top one finish, a win. That, that's how you say that. That's how language works. A top one finish is Marius, and he's not here this week. So, Yannick's the potentially the only multi-time winner. Continuing as we will say goodbye to Tenshi Leo. Sadges in chat, as we will head into our top four. But we have no time to be sad because it's Cup of the Day, and we got to keep on celebrating. we got to keep moving forward. These players, they've been driving well on a map that I think we all agree is hard to drive consistently. It's hard on that first checkpoint, on this first ring checkpoint, to get it consistently. These four players have done it up until now. They've been looking safe. But here we go, one more time. All four of them clean into this one. It's Hazardu who's chasing, though, and it's Hazardu who'll have to risk. He's got the cars in front in his sights, though, and there's definitely room for him to overtake one of them here. No one flying. Novu taking a different line, going a little bit further to the right. Lands wider then, and that means he'll have a little bit more speed than Hazardu who clips. And with Hazardu clipping, I think we've got a lock top three, barring a mistake on the last jump. And I can't imagine we'll see one now. Surely these players safe a little bit. It looks like that's exactly what they've done. Goodbye to Hazardu. He'll finish just outside the top three. An excellent run from him. But we're into the top three. Congratulations, Hazardu. Fourth is nothing to sniff at, but it will not get you onto the podium. Our podium tonight locked in. Our podium looking strong, and we're looking now for low 43s. I'm looking for a 42 to see this one out, because it's going to be tight. Novu, Korzu, and Yannix. Who's going to be our finalists? Low jump. They're all safe in a little bit. Corzo safer than the others. And you can see that's already putting them about a tenth behind. A tenth and a half almost, but good speed. And he's overtaking Novu on the jump. All three of them looking for Corzo so wide. And it's Yannix, who is the player behind now, chasing a little bit. But when Yannix is behind, you can feel the pressure as he breathes down your neck. And he won't stay behind for long. Novu dropping to the back. Corvu now. Corvu Corzo will be the player in front as we head into this jump. This drop down caught out Hazardu last time around. And Novu, maybe remembering that one, takes it very safe. But you cannot afford to be safe in this lobby right now when you're at the back hoping for a mistake from the players in front. Yannick's safing. Novu went very high. Yannick will take first place. Corzo will take second. And Novu will drop out in third place. Our finalists for this week, Corzo versus Yannick's. Good looks come out in chat. What a finish this is going to be. Yannick's looking for the two time. Corzo looking for the one time. Who will take it down? I'm excited. I'm pumped. Server will pause one more time. Build attention. Give me those dot dot dots in chat. Where's the server gone? One player will be eliminated. One player will take home this week's title of mini RPG winner. Yannix forces Corzo. Let's not waste it at the beginning. Yannix has definitely been going lower than Corzo in these ones, but this time Corzo is a little bit lower than he was. Will still be behind Yannix at the start. The gap is less than a tenth though, and Corzo, slightly better line into this first jump, just needs to not mess it up. Yannix too low, and he's messed up the ring checkpoint, and I honestly think that that's all she wrote, ladies and gentlemen. Yannix was so clutch the entire way through, so consistent, and at the death, with the pressure on, he goes a little bit too low. You don't see that every day, but this is the day you see it, and Corzo, he knows he's got to keep it safe. You still have to keep it safe. A mistake could still cost you, but he's done all that it takes. And I believe Corzo is a deserving winner this week. He'll cross, nearly crash into Yannick's car across the finish line, as Yannick's will finish this one on out. GG's come out and chat as we will wrap up another edition of Mini RPG of the Week. A fun map here. Oreo by Mr. Big Luz. I've enjoyed it the whole way through. I told you there were some decision points and there were some moments of pain for definitely some of these players. Ring checkpoints. Well, it's not quite a random roof bounce as we've had in some previous weeks in the staple, but I think those are the two staples. You want to make a mini RPG of the week map at the moment, you need a ring checkpoint with a very harsh respawn or you need a roof bounce that uh, will we'll cause some controversy at times during rounds. will cause some players to feel like they dropped out before it was their time. Either way, that's it for another week. Thank you very much for joining us here. It's been a pleasure as always. The racing is good, the maps are fun, and the community is a good time as well. Exclamation mark, dis dis exclamation mark Discord in chat. Uh, we'll bring you up that Discord. We'll let you know where to go if you want to join in the community and if you want to potentially compete in a couple of these rounds in the future as well. Because, hey, why wouldn't you? Everyone's having a good time here. Maybe you could be the one to take down another week. Get into that top ten. Why not? Anything could happen and even still. 
it'll, it'll be fun. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you to the player behind the scenes for doing production. Thank you to everyone who's done production and the rest of it. Zeta 8, Black Pulse, the admin staff, the player for burping in my ears. And with that, I'm signing off. Thanks again. See you soon.